Okay, so we spent the last few days looking at converting radicals from mixed to radicals to entire radicals. So we're going to move on now and start looking at doing operations with these. So today we're going to look at adding and subtracting, and then the next lesson we'll do some multiplying and dividing. So for this topic, it actually should be 2.3. What we're doing is we want to look at just adding and subtracting. So here's an example. If I give you root 48 minus root 3 minus root plus root 75, we can actually combine those and get an answer of 8 root 3. So we'll figure out how to do that in a minute. But before we get to that, what we want to do is think back to some basic algebra. So if you remember in algebra, we could only add or subtract like terms. So for it to be a like term, we had to have the same uh, variable. So 4x minus 2x, we could put those together to get just 2. And then 3y plus y, we could put those together to get 4y. So we add to add or subtract like terms. The same thing applies with if you had exponents. So if I had 4x squared plus 3x minus 2x squared plus 4y, we are sorry, not 4y, let's make it 4x. So we could add those together, but we can only add the ones that are the same. So the 4x squared and the 2x squared could go together to give us 2, and then 3x plus 4x would go together to give us 7x. So when we did like terms, they had to be the same letter and the same exponent. So now with radicals, it works the same. We have to have the same radical number, and we do the, basically the exact same thing. So instead of it being 6x plus 3x minus 5, if this was algebra, this is how we'd write it. So we'd go 6 plus 3 is 9, minus 5 would be 4x. So in this case, our radical is the like term, or the like thing, so we just do the same thing. 6 plus 3 minus 5 would be 4 root 2. So they have to be the same radical. So for this next example, you can see we have 4 root 2 and 5 root 2. We can put those together to get 9 root 2. And then we have negative 3 root 3 and 7 root 3. Put those together to give us 4 root 3. So they have to be the same radical, and it would also work if I gave you square roots. So if I gave you 4 square root 2 plus 3 cube root 3, we couldn't put those together because they're not like. But I could add a 3 root 2 and a minus 5 cube root 3. Those would be the same. So the 4 and the 3 we could put together. And we could put the cube root of 3s together, so 3 minus 5 would be negative 2. So as long as the index number and the root number are the same, you can combine them just by adding or subtracting the front numbers. So what happens, or the challenging questions in these cases, isn't following that. It's to actually do the simplifying. So the way this question is to start with, the 24, 54, and 96, they're not the same. But we can actually change them to make them like radicals. So let's go back to the title page for a sec, and we'll see what they did here. So they changed the 48 into 16 and 3. They left the root 3 the way it was, and they changed the 75 into 25 and 3. And then when we simplify, we had 4 root 3 minus 1 root 3 and 5 root 3. Remember, we can put the 1 there if we want. That might help. So now when we add these together, we have 4 minus 1, which is 3, plus 5, which is 8. So the biggest challenge with adding and subtracting is doing what we did yesterday, the simplifying process, not necessarily the adding and subtracting. So in this case, we want to take root 24, break it into 4 and 6. The 54 would be 9 and 6. And 96 would be 16 and 6. So I pick the biggest root that goes into all of them. They all have root 6 as a leftover, which is good, because now we can actually combine those. So we'd have 2 root 6, 3 root 6, and 4 root 6. So 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 4 is 1. So we can write our answer as 1 root 6, or... Just root 6 is good enough. So let's try a couple more. Here we have some x's and y's, but the same rules still apply. So break your 80 into the biggest. So that would be 16 and 5. And the x can't square root, so we'd leave it out. So that would give us 4 root 5x. And then do the same thing for the second one. And you can usually see if we get a root 5x, chances are the other one will be root 5x. So that means 20x divided by 5x would give us 4, which is a perfect root. So we'd have 2 root 5x, and now 4 minus 2 is 2. 
and we do a cube root the same way again, break the cube root into its biggest, so that would be 8 and 10, and the y we can't do nothing with, so let's just leave it, so that gives us 2 cube root 10y, and our second one would be 27 and 10. So always look for patterns, because if once we get one, then usually the second one's going to be the same. So that would give us 3 cube root 10y. So when we add those, we would get 5 cube root 10y. So let's try another one. Here we got, we just have numbers in front, but nothing changes. Just think of this as being 7 times root 27. So let's just leave the 7 out. Break the 27 into 9 and 3. Do the same thing. Break the 75 into 25 and 3. And our last one would be 49 and 3. So you can see they all have root 3, which is good. So now when we simplify it, we have 7 times root 9 is just a regular 3, root 3. We have 3 times 5, root 3. And 2 times 7, root 3. So multiply all those together. So 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 5 is 15. And 2 times 7 is 14. So now we can add or subtract our front numbers, and we get 20. Okay, so you can do it row by row like I did, or what some people like to do is just sort of do one at a time. So they would change the 7 and root 9, root 3, then write it as 7, 3, root 3, and then 21. So some people like to do one at a time, work up and down. Other people like to do row by row. doesn't make any difference, whatever you prefer. So here's another one. So we want to change the 108. So that would be for a square root, 108. Uh, what works out to that one? 36 maybe, so 108 divided by 36 is 3, yep, so 36 and 3, and we have an x squared, so let's take that out, so let's do this one vertically, so that'd give us negative 5 times 6x root 3, so that one will simplify to negative 30x root 3, now let's do the second one, so 3 quarters and x is good, break the 8 into 4 and 2, so the root 4 would be just a regular 2. So 3 quarters times 4 would be 3 halves, or 1.5. Let's just use a decimal. So 1.5 root 2. Go to the next one. So you can see it's the same process, just a little bit of work. So we want 25 and 2, and the x squared will be good. So that'll simplify it to 5x root 2. So that would be 2.5 root 2. And our last one break the 48 into 16 and 3. So we'd have negative 5 quarters times 4 root 3. And we put those together, that would just be minus 5. Right, 5 quarters times 4 would be 5, x root 3. And I forgot the x on this middle one, the 2.5. Okay, so we've got them all done now. Now we can see we do actually have some common terms. So the minus 30x and the minus 5 we can put together to be 35x root 3. And we can put our two middle ones together to be 4x root 2. And that's it for that one. So a little bit of work involved, but the process is the same. And whether you have x's or y's, still do the same thing. So you can see the challenge in all this is just doing the simplifying. So cube root of 64, let's make it... Uh, what is a cube root of 64? Uh, 8 actually 64 cube roots the way it is 64 cube root is 4 so we don't have to do anything so just, just change that to a regular 4 then our next one we have 375 cube rooted so that one doesn't work, so we want to break that into 125 and 3. So that one, well, let's simplify these as we go. So 1 8 times 4 is a half. And this one will be 2 times 5 cube root 3, so that would be 10 cube root 3. So we have a 0 0.5 plus a 10 so far. Our next one, cube root of 54, that doesn't work. Um, 54 divided by 3, does that work? Yeah, we get 18. But 18 
isn't the cube root. So that one doesn't seem to work. And the 24, maybe there's a typo with this question. Let's see here. Let me bring, look at my perfect roots to kind of remember. So let's look at 54. We have 20, 27, I guess, would work. So let's go minus 2 thirds. We'd have cube root 27 and 2. So we'd have minus 2 thirds times 3, which would be just negative 2. So we have negative 2 cube root of 2. So that's good. So our last one then is minus 5 halves, cube root of 24. And 24 would break into 8 and 3. So we'd end up getting 5 halves times 2, which would just be negative 5, cube root of 3. So they all worked out a little bit different, but we do see we got 2 in common. So the half by itself, we can't do nothing with. So it would stay the same. The 10 cube root 3 is good by itself, so we'll leave that the same. We can combine these two. Oops, sorry, I combined the wrong ones. So we can combine the 10 and the 5, so that would be positive 5. Let's fix that up. So we'd have positive 5 cube root of 3. And our 2 we can't do nothing with, so 2 cube root of 2, and our half we can't do nothing with. So it doesn't matter what order you write them in, I just kind of put them in that order, highest to lowest type of thing. And 